My best friend Kyle is an eccentric introvert. He doesn't know how to talk to people. He's unfriendly and says things that most people find offensive. Mm -mm. I'm his only friend because I've learned that he has a good heart. The reason I stick around is that I know his story. He's incredibly rude and impulsive, but it's not his fault. Mm -mm. What Kyle lacks in social skills, he makes up for in his love for sneakers. And it's a good thing that I love sneakers too, because it's the only thing Kyle talks about. He started a sneaker club at school. It's a club that focuses on discussing the latest on the sneaker market. There were four people in the club. Yeah, comment down below if that obsession for sneakers is... Alright, don't worry. Including myself and Kyle. Then Kyle put together a manifesto where everyone had to make sure their sneakers were spotless at the meetings, along with a few other crazy ideas. The club was just the two of us after that. Most people give Kyle a rough time. He isn't interested in listening to them, and he comes across as arrogant. I'd love to tell people about his condition, but his parents don't want anyone to know. We don't want people to treat him differently, they say. You see, not even Kyle knows about his condition. The only reason his parents told me was that when we were 10 years old, I'd had enough of Kyle and his selfishness. His parents heard me arguing with Kyle, saying that I'd never be his friend again. On my way out the house, they stopped me and very reluctantly they explained, Please, don't abandon Kyle, Spencer, begged his mom. You're his only friend. I know he's not always the nicest person, but there's a reason for it. They asked me to promise not to tell anyone. Kyle had an accident when he was very young. Ever since then, he's been different. It's as if the part of his brain responsible for understanding people stopped working. Please, don't abandon him. After that, I agreed to stay. I finally understood Kyle's mood swings and his selfishness. Kyle lived in a bubble, one that was only big enough for his parents and I. But what about his sneaker obsession? I asked. Where did that come from? His parents shrugged. The doctor we went to go see after Kyle's accident told us that sometimes when one part of the brain is damaged, another part of the brain kicks into overdrive. The part of his brain responsible for creativity is running fast and its only focus is sneakers. Kyle's parents are not the type to interfere in his life. They didn't ask for much and they always made sure that we had snacks and plenty to do. But when Kyle turned 16, they asked me for a big favor. The older we get, the more we worry about Kyle said his dad. Once we go, who's going to look after him? I froze. They must have seen my expression because they started laughing. No, Spencer, we don't expect you to look after him. We, we want him to have someone. Not now, but one day. With the way he is, he'll never learn to talk to girls. You may not believe this, but he responds to you since you've been his friend. He's learned to do so many things he refused to do before. Would you be able to help him talk to girls? We're not expecting miracles, just a start for now. I thought about what they were asking. It would be tough, but I agreed. I felt sorry for them and even more so for Kyle. I started thinking about him when he was older. I mean, who would put up with him the way he was now? I needed to help him. I knew Kyle wasn't going to make this an easy task. There was only one way that he was even going to consider looking at a girl. She'd need to love sneakers as much as him. It took me a week, but I found seven girls that fit this criteria. I struck up conversations with each of them. I invited them to the sneaker club. Four said they'd come. Only two showed up. Kyle was happy to see two new pairs of shoes in the sneaker club. The girls were impressed with Kyle's knowledge. But 30 minutes in, Kyle started in on the rules of the club and one of the two girls left. My hopes were evaporating fast. To my surprise, Taylor agreed to the rules. I'm tired of people thinking that clubs like these are excuses to goof around, said Taylor. I think rules are great. With the sneaker club happening only once a week, I needed more ways for Kyle to interact with Taylor. She was incredible with him, patient, understanding, and completely crazy about sneakers. I tried planning trips to the movies and a picnic, but Kyle wouldn't agree. I needed something bigger, and it arrived in the form of a sneaker competition. One of the world's biggest sneaker brands, Apollo, was holding a contest to collaborate with a lucky fan on a new sneaker design. The winner would receive a patent for their shoe and the royalties from the sales. I couldn't have asked for a better way to get Kyle and Taylor working together. Excited, I pitched the idea to the sneaker club. Kyle didn't even let me finish speaking. Let's do it, he said. We'll need to put in extra work to get this all done said Taylor. I arranged to have these extra sessions at Kyle's house. His parents were overjoyed to see Kyle working with a girl. I made excuses to give Taylor and Kyle more and more alone time, fetching food and Yeah, this 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 too this 
is all this is this is crazy crazy that what y'all think I'll be down in the comment section but I think this is crazy let me know if y'all agree with me and tell me what you think in the comment section down below this is crazy drinks while the two of them worked tirelessly on the sneaker project it was great hearing them speaking kyle was even starting to ask her questions and there were even moments when he wasn't rude kyle was learning to speak to girls a week before the contest deadline we ran into a problem the sneaker club had to narrow our three final designs down to one Taylor and I were happy with any of the three, but Kyle wouldn't budge. They're all so perfect, he said. I won't choose, and you can't make me. Up until then, I'd thought of Taylor as nothing more than a girl that Kyle would become friends with. But Taylor showed Kyle so much patience during this difficult choice. She placed her hand on his shoulder with such tenderness that even Kyle calmed down. Kyle, they're all great decisions, she said to him. So why don't we pick one to show them now? I know they're going to love what we do. Then, we can show them the others. How about that? Kyle smiled and nodded. The next day, we submitted our design. Then, we waited and waited. It was only two weeks, but it felt like a year. Three weeks later, we got an email from the company saying that we'd made the top five. We were overjoyed. <laughs> Taylor hugged me and then hugged Kyle. I had to laugh. It was the first time a girl had ever hugged him. It looked like a bus had hit him. He didn't know what to do with his hands, but he smiled. I think she likes you, Kyle. I whispered to him when Taylor left. We've got to get back to work, said Kyle flustered. The sneaker company invited us to their head office to meet with them. The next step was the interview process. Taylor and I reminded Kyle to be polite. We met the chief design officer, introducing ourselves and telling her that Kyle was the genius behind our brand. She was a stylish lady, and her taste in sneakers wow. was impeccable. The meeting was going well until Kyle started blurting out all kinds of crazy things. We tried to get him to stop, but the damage had already been done. At the end of the meeting, the CDO asked to have a word alone with me. Your friend's eccentricity is great, but I can't have him leading your team. He's rude. The public will hate him. We'll have to make you the team leader. I didn't like the sound of that. Kyle and Taylor drove the designs. I was basically an observer. She wouldn't listen to me. Think about it. Let me know in an hour, or I'm replacing your team and throwing out your design. I told Taylor and Kyle about our decision on the drive home. While I felt guilty about it, they didn't mind going along with the CDO's plan. As long as we win, I'm fine with that, said Kyle. I called the CDO and agreed to her terms, but I still felt guilty about it all. A week later, we were called into Apollo's production office and briefed on what would happen next. They had a recording crew follow us around. Their focus was me. It was a classic reality TV deal. It turns out they were about to turn it into a major show. For two weeks, these cameras followed us around and filmed our design process. Kyle was his normal self, but they edited him to seem kind of normal. Taylor loved the spotlight, and she was a natural. Remember, we're the sneaker club, she said at each recording, reminding all the viewers about our personal brand. The grand finale arrived, and we won the contest. They made out a giant check with my name on it and wow. gave it to us at the award ceremony. Taylor's smile withered at that. It didn't say the sneaker club. I couldn't help but feel guilty about that. If a check with my name on it was bad, things were about to get worse. Two days later, I got an electronic message to say that $4 million had been deposited into my bank account. Immediately, I pulled the team together and hired lawyers to set up the sneaker club as a company. The money was split equally between us, along with an agreement on all future royalties. I thought I'd fixed everything, but that was just the tip of the iceberg. The real trouble was ahead of us. The PR demands, advertising campaigns, interviews, and guest appearances began. Luckily, it was our summer vacation, and we could attend every function. After a month of this, Kyle had had enough. He had upset just about every TV host. Taylor and I had done our best to smooth things over, but the tension in our team was building. Eventually, Kyle quit. Soon enough, Taylor followed. I chose to stay. Ironically, now I really was the face of the sneaker club. The interviews now became about why Kyle and Taylor left. The public had seen conflict in the team, and that's what they wanted to hear about. Kyle's a genius, I told the reporters. They called him rude and arrogant. He's not. Mm -hmm. He's... He's... I wanted so badly to tell them, but I couldn't. 
I promised his parents that I wouldn't tell anyone. Eventually, though, it became too much. The media painted me out to be a saint under the terrible dictatorship that Kyle created. Mm -hmm. I couldn't stand all these lies. While on a break from the press tour, I visited Kyle's house. He didn't want to see me. I didn't mind. The truth was that I wasn't there to see him. I sat down with his parents and spoke to them about what was happening. I have to tell the media, I said. They're turning Kyle into something that he's not. I have to tell them the truth. They listened patiently, but still they shook their heads. That's not a good idea, said his mom. Kyle's doing just fine the way things are. I don't think he'll be able to handle the whole world knowing. At that moment, I realized that this had nothing to do with Kyle. This is about you. You don't want the world to know that Kyle's different. That's not true, said his dad. But I could tell he was shaken. The world doesn't need to know about our son. And I think it's time that you leave. I refused. Everything was beginning to make sense now. And if I was irritated with the media and the press, I was disgusted with Kyle's parents. Oh, You're crap. ashamed of him. We're not ashamed of him, said his mother, tears pooling in her eyes. We're ashamed of what we did to him. She asked me to sit as they gave me the whole truth. The real story behind Kyle's condition. Everything was fine until Kyle was three. He was a kind, gentle little boy. But we'd spent three years with him every day. We needed a night out. You have to understand. We just wanted one night out. A chance to be adults again. So we hired a recommended babysitter and worked up enough courage to leave our son for a few hours. We went out to dinner, watched a movie, and enjoyed the quiet. When we got home, the babysitter was asleep, and Kyle was laying at the foot of the stairs. He had fallen down two flights and hit his head several times on the way down. We rushed him to the hospital, praying that he would be okay. But he was never the same again. Mm -mm. Spencer, we still blame ourselves for trusting that stupid babysitter. It's our fault that Kyle is the way he is. We're terrible parents. Kyle's father consoled his wife as she cried. Besides the doctor, you're the only person we've told. We don't need people to know about our failings as parents. So if you tell anyone about Kyle's condition, you will not be allowed back into this house, said his father. And we will tell Kyle you betrayed him. Understand this, Spencer. We will do whatever it takes to protect our son. No one can know what we did. Most of all, Kyle. He'll hate us for what we did to him. The interview started up again. And they were hard to get through. I was torn between letting the world know and losing my best friend. Because that's what he was. My best friend. The thought of losing him hurt. But the thought of people thinking he was a monster hurt even more. Tell us the worst thing Kyle has ever made you do. Asked the interviewer in a live interview. Are you kidding? I was done with the lies. Kyle's the best thing that ever happened in my life. But I don't expect you to understand that. He's got a condition. He fell down the stairs as a kid, and the parts of his brain responsible for socializing don't work. He's a great guy. He just doesn't understand people. And mm -hmm. who could blame him? Everyone's out to get him. He is loyal, trustworthy, and most of all, he's honest. The interviewer was speechless. But I couldn't stop. I told the interviewer all about Kyle and Taylor and how they were the driving force behind the sneaker club. It was a relief to tell the truth, but I knew that it would come at a cost. My phone beeped. It was a text from Kyle's parents. You're no longer welcome in our home. I knew then that I'd never see my friend again, but I would have done it again in a heartbeat. A day later, there was a knock on my parents' door. It was Kyle and Taylor. They were smiling. After watching your interview, my parents told me everything, said Kyle. You know how long I've been beating myself up for being different? Wishing that I could be like you, normal, like everyone else, since last night? I've been doing research on conditions similar to mine, and it turns out, I am kind of normal, and I don't blame my parents. Mistakes happen. He gave me a hug, and so did Taylor. From that moment on, the sneaker club became more than just a sneaker company. It became a voice for all the people who are different in the world. The CEO wow. of Apollo loved this new angle and opened the door to Kyle and his eccentricities. The interviews were different now, and the world was far more accepting of my friend. Kyle's obsession was still shoes, but he had a new one too, learning about his condition. Not so that he could fit in, but so that he could help other kids who are different. Taylor was his uh... biggest fan. Kyle's parents eventually forgave me, and themselves. The truth is that they were protecting themselves. They were afraid of what people would say about them when they found out. The funny thing was that people supported them. Mistakes do happen, and in some ways, it was meant to be. 
Kyle wouldn't be the sneaker genius that he is today if it wasn't for that fall he suffered when he was three. Sometimes our greatest misfortune ends up being our greatest blessing. Wow. Y'all comment down below to watch it all be like, share, comment, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications. This is the this is the King Geo. I'm out. And also comment down below if you wanna see more videos like this or comment down below suggestions yeah, suggestions for videos I should do reaction to. I'm out.